Hello everybody, Eric Secondary Machine. Today I'm out at the shop. I just pulled the spindle out of the 10 inch uh, lathe here. It's a little south bend. You know, I've never pulled a spindle out of a lathe before because there's never really been a need for it. So, um, anyhow, so an all new job to me. So anyway, I've watched a few videos online about how to do it. I, somebody was actually commenting on one of my other videos about how you could knock it, this out of here uh, with a hammer. I'm glad I didn't go that route. I actually made myself a little puller out of all thread. Uh, here it is. Um, only took a minute to make that, and I was able to squeeze it out of there, which, you know, I don't believe this lathe has ever been apart before. And so, and one reason I believe that, you can see on these nuts here where I've marked these so that I get it basically torqued back to where it came undone. But when I broke these loose, I actually... If you look really close at the end of my fingernail there, I actually watched the paint there split. And so I do not believe this lathe has ever actually been apart, which is kind of, you know, you can just kind of tell when something's been apart and been uh, kind of messed with and stuff in the past. And one of the ways you can really tell is, you know, if you break a bolt loose and you see the paint peel, well, this is all original paint. Like you can see here where the paint across here so when I broke those loose, I don't, I just don't think they've ever been loose. When I measured this lathe, you know, um, for the end play and up and down through the spindle, there should be a thousandths clearance uh, for both of those. Like it's spot on, like it should, should have been sent out from the factory. Um, it does have this other belt that was on it that obviously wasn't factory, but you can tell by the belt that uh, the belt was made. You can see where it's put together here. So... They didn't take the spindle out when they did this belt. Do you know what this belt is made of? I was showing this to my buddy Chat. I'm baffled. Like, that's not leather. I don't know. It feels like it's plastic or something. It's just really odd. So I bought a new rubber belt, which I just finished getting wrapped around the uh, the back gear assembly. It's going to be nice to have that on there. Um, but anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked. Let's talk about what I found with the spindle. Um, I found exactly what I would hope to find. Look at this, you guys. This is in beautiful shape. Like, I literally, I could not ask for more out of this. Um, no galling, no scarring, no nothing. Um, you know, I'm really glad that I had the good sense since I've gotten this. I really wanted to, because this doesn't have a conventional bearing to it, like a roller bearing or a taper bearing, like would have been on all my Atlas lathes, um, I just didn't really want to run the shit out of this till I really knew what was going on inside of the spindle because I didn't want to damage anything, especially with these oilers, because my understanding is that over the course of time is that they can kind of go bad. And that's actually what I've found with this. So the rear one is really pliable and was definitely delivering more oil than the front one. The front one, when you squeeze, it doesn't, it's hard, like... It doesn't squeeze like the other one. As a matter of fact, it didn't have any spring pressure any longer inside of the hole, and I was, was really struggling to get it out of there. What I ended up doing to get it out of there was I took this drywall screw, and I just threaded it down into where it would grab enough that I was able to actually pull this up out of the hole because it was stuck down in there. It didn't want to move at all. Uh, another thing is that the, uh, the cup oilers we're getting gummed up like the passage um, for the oil to get through this it wasn't entirely blocked some oil was able to get through it but it was all goobered up and just you know I just finished running some compressed air through there and getting these all cleaned out but uh, even the bottom of these cup oilers um, they were all goobered up um, you can see here some of that stuff I saved it the stuff's actually hard like you can squeeze this and it's it's like a it's a chunk like that came out of the oiler. I kept some of this oil from uh, what was coming out of the passage too. Like this stuff is just gooey. Um, not exactly what you want to have down in there. So I've been cleaning that stuff out. As for the spindle, the uh, the surfaces where the bearing actually runs are absolutely pristine on both ends. There's a little bit of surface rust, and look at this. You can see the X pattern 
Um, this is where the uh, this pulley rides. And if you look inside of the pulley, it's got, um, for the oiling, it's got an X. You probably can't see it down in there, but um, basically it's got a cross, an X um, for delivering that oil through the, there's a little screw on the top of this that actually says oil. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little oil screw there. You're supposed to keep that oiled. So at some point, this sat for a long enough period of time for some little bit of just surface rust. Like, you can't even really pick that up with your fingernail. Um, so it sat in one spot for a long enough period of time for a little bit of rust to form. And you can actually see where that cross was. But uh, the part that I'm concerned about is where the bearings ride. And both of those are absolutely pristine, too. So... I'm really thrilled with what I'm finding here. I've got the new oiler sitting in a bag here with some spindle oil absorbing some uh, fluid. So I'm getting ready to put those back in there. I cleaned up a little bit of the inside of the casting. I was hoping maybe some of this stuff would clean up too. This was all disgusting and stuff also, but it cleaned up and uh, maybe this part wasn't painted. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's not cleaning up as well as to what I would like. You know, um, I've sold off my other two lathes and there's been some comments about people saying, oh, you should have kept the second lathe. You know, don't despair. There will be another lathe at some point. I'm just waiting until I see a good opportunity because I'm here to tell you, like when I see a good deal on a lathe, I just absolutely can't say no. That Actually, that's how I ended up with this one. Um, you know, what I paid for this was ridiculously low. I knew it was a bargain and I went and grabbed it. Um, and it's a keeper. This is an awesome lathe. This is probably going to be my forever lathe for a long time unless I come across something better. Uh, but I don't know that I will. But uh, do not despair. There will be more lathes. And so I'm just waiting for something good to come up at a good price. And um, I just enjoy going through and working on them and uh, getting them going again and uh, pairing them with some tooling and selling them off down the road. And making a few bucks off of them is always nice, too. Um, I've certainly never lost money on one. So anyhow... Um, I just wanted to show you really quick how this was coming along, and yeah, I'm thrilled. Because you know what? Until I knew how this looked in here, I didn't really want to throw a bunch more money at this, because if I got in here and I found that uh, it was in bad shape... Actually, I was expecting to find that this was riding on cast iron. Um, I guess... I would guess that this is bronze, a bronze bearing. Um, it looks to me like that would be replaceable, Um but I don't, you know, I don't know that that's actually for sure true. Um, either way, I've got a lathe that's got great bearing surfaces, which means that this is worth keeping. Um, you know, if I got in there and I found out otherwise, you know, maybe this one would need to go down the road or maybe even off to scrap if it was really that bad. But anyhow, um, I'm going to let you guys go and jump back in and uh, put this back together. I'm still waiting on my replacement wheel so that I can get the motor and stuff back together. But I'm really eager to get this lathe up and going again so that I can be using it. So um, I'll check this out real quick with the new mill. Man, I need to build that spacer. So uh, this drill chuck, this R8 drill chuck and the R8 adapter just came and uh, I put those together. I was actually going to drill something here today. But look at the clearance. Like the knee is all the way down. And that's what I get. So, yeah, I need a riser. I was thinking that, you know, maybe four or five inches would be enough. No, now I'm leaning towards, uh, I'm going to probably do a full six inch riser on this because it needs it. Like how, I don't even know why Enco would build this tool this way. That's not nearly enough clearance. And it would have been so easy to have made it taller. Like it, it just does not make any sense. So, I will be building, actually, I almost bought the material to build the riser yesterday, but when I was out buying the material for this stand, their bandsaw, uh, the place where I buy my metal, their bandsaw was broken down. And so they couldn't actually cut it for me. And so that's part of why I didn't just grab that yesterday. But uh, I asked the guy, you know, will that be back online later today? And he said, yeah, we hope it's going to be later today. So I'm going to run down. I need, to, I need to get going on that project because this tool is basically useless um, with that little bit of clearance. So I ended up actually having to come over here and I had to drill what I needed over here on the clousing. The good old clousing. Man, I'm going to miss this tool, but uh, 
this is going to be up for sale here pretty quick. So anyway, Eric's secondary machine. I will talk to y'all later.